you can see here basically is the symmetric diagram on the left hand side and right hand side is the animation of acquisition uh, process so on the left hand side basically uh, there there are these uh, lines basically indicated with some arrows any gpr unit this particular cart here represent a gpr unit it can be cart mounted or it can be any other configuration as well uh, as you can see here in this uh, picture basically it can be cart it can be hand handy tool or it can be um, uh, uh, something like uh, here as you can see in the uh, snow scan so any configuration can be uh, uh, deployed according to the site conditions what is the required on the site but usually only one thing is common that is basically uh, uh, the architecture of a gpr so a computer console will always be there to give the commands or read the outputs or uh, basically all the operations will be taken care here you can modify all the parameters at the time of acquisition according to your need all these things can be covered using this computer console and this console basically connected with a sensor a sensor basically uh, consists of uh, two uh, different uh, modules uh, basically one called the transmitter and another called the receiver as their means that uh, transmitter basically transmits the radio signals in the material and then accordingly if there is some sort of uh, contrast in physical properties uh, as you can say uh, the gpr works on the dielectric mat uh, material range so basically dielectric constant is the value uh, basically uh, that that is going to define how much reflection that we are going to get for a particular anomaly and accordingly these uh, trace is this basically these 1d models the variations of the reflectivity uh, in this particular uh, uh, investigation domain uh, that will uh, define the response of any anomaly underneath so uh, the more common things that has to be reminded is basically a transmitter and receiver will be there they will be synced and uh, uh, in the control of the computer console where you can see what is actually happening underneath so here this is the survey direction basically if we are going to survey what is going to happen like here in this case there are two particular pipes here uh, and both pipes can be uh, an, uh, analyzed using the gpr as you can see here on the top uh, on the corner of this uh, particular uh, uh, animation you can see the uh, computer console and you can see the data basically uh, one starts from the left side and go to the right side basically that is the gpr uh, working and it is sending the signal continuously and reflections are coming continuously so if there is some sort of anomaly then this kind of hyperbolas will be there for a point or object or a very small object and these uh, signatures has to be interpreted after the processing and then you can see uh, yeah this is how your project is going to work so this is the main working of the gpr and this applies to different uh, rocks different uh, uh, type of uh, moisture content in the soil or whatever contrast that can be present in terms of dielectric uh, constant i will be talking about the dielectric constant uh, here basically some terminologies has to be cleared out first like uh, what uh, what are the basic things that we are going to encounter when are whenever we are going to deal with the gpr prospecting so as you can see on the left hand side the same radar waves are sent and for from object we are uh, getting some signal that has been recorded uh, using the receiver end of the antenna and displayed you on the computer console so all these things are happening as uh, i have uh, mentioned in that particular uh, uh, last slide uh, basically uh, any contrast in dielectric constant so it is it comes important like we discuss a little bit about the dielectric constant and then of course we are going to talk about the uh, electrical conductivity and what is the wave velocity and what is the attenuation depth of penetration and resolution because these six uh, these six things basically uh, defines the power of your gpr that you are using or you are going to use for a particular research or a particular uh, project in your uh, company so let's talk about uh, the dielectric constant uh, every material every rock every uh, single thing any matter uh, present in this universe universe is basically made up made up of atoms and 
each atom has positive and negative inside of it positive basically uh, represents the proton portion or the nucleus portion and uh, negative is basically the same opposite charge for the electrons so what happens when we don't apply any external em field to the atoms they uh, keeps in their uh, natural state and uh, all things are balanced nucleus uh, is in the middle and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus as we have read and uh, learned in our academic classes from bohr's model so basically that's the main main thing when no external field is applied but uh, what happens uh, then maxwell come basically and uh, uh, he said like yeah uh, what happens uh, like uh, if uh, gauss equations uh, and ampere's laws are uh, grouped together and we apply the same prospecting on the atoms then what happens when we apply uh, the electric field external uh, electric field then some sort of polarization occurs like uh, in the direction of that electric field this applied electric field these neutral atom will arrange them they, uh, themselves and what happens when we remove it then they comes back to their original state so basically what is the degree like if we apply some intensity uh, e of the external electric field what is the uh, intensity of polarization that totally depends on the electric field that we are applying and the contrast basically this contrast is in the property of dielectric constant so basically it is a constant value and uh, for different material on the left hand side right hand side you can see a graph uh, representing different materials different uh, uh, rocks and uh, uh, basically this is going from air to water for air we have the value of dielectric constant 1 and for water around like water we have a value around like 80 or 81 so this is the maximum range all the material present on the earth except any metal we have uh, values between 1 to 81 and all values are very specific to the uh, conditions of the rock like whether rock is saturated with water or gas or there is some sort of porosity involved all those things has to be considered because these uh, range these ranges basically uh, uh, gives you idea about what is the condition of the rock itself so let's move forward and let's talk about the conductivity conductivity is basically derived from the ohm's law what is uh, the resistance basically uh, resistance basically is the, the uh, total amount of uh, obstacle in the path of any electron or ion movement when some electric current is applied so basically we are not applying the electric current but we are applying the electric field so according to the electromagnetic laws it is universal like whenever we are going to apply e field then there will be current involved so we may may not be able to measure that because we need suitable instruments for that uh, we use uh, electrical resistivity methods basically totally dependent on the conductivity and same conductivity value is here so as you can see a uh, different material has different electrical conductivity so the main thing that i want to focus here using the gpr basically why we are talking about conductivity because conductivity plays a very vital role while estimating the depth of interpretation like what is the depth uh, maximum depth uh, that your gpr can actually record so that totally depends upon the conductivity for particularly we have for an example we have water like water has different state it can be saline it can be uh, uh, fresh water or it can be uh, in frozen form so all these things they basically gives you value for water basically you will be having value of dielectric constant 81 but conductivity is different for both cases so that is a very uh, crucial thing because uh, if we have the dielectric constant we can't actually uh, say like whether water is saline or not underneath so basically we need to apply the conductivity rules as well so higher the conductivity uh, low the depth of penetration that's the rule and then comes the wave velocity basically we know that electric electromagnetic waves or light waves or any waves that is falling into the em spectrum basically travels with the speed of light in vacuum or air but what happens when some certain uh, 
uh, wavelengths or some certain frequencies basically uh, penetrate into the solid material for example rocks or soil or concrete then what happens then their uh, dielectric uh, what what we say the wave, wave velocity basically the velocity of, uh, with which uh, the wave is actually propagating in the material that decreases and that gives you the signature like what kind of material that we are dealing with for here uh, for example here you can see uh, in this chart air has the maximum gpr velocity 0.3 meter per nanosecond uh, per nanosecond basically it is a very high speed so that's why it is in the meter per nanosecond not in meter per second or something like that because speed of light is very 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 uh, high so all those values uh, are less in case of concrete or clay or any any sort of uh, material that you can imagine of so it is uh, very important to understand the velocity as well because velocity gives you the signature of the water content present in a particular rock like any rock can have value uh, uh, let's say in clay basically we have a value 0.06 but if we increase the water content in clay then definitely the velocity is going to uh, increase a bit little, little bit so here is the signal loss basically uh, a lot of people may have heard it like uh, whenever i'm speaking that's also kind of waves so that is a different uh, scenario because it is uh, basically acoustic uh, waves that uh, Uh, i am generating while i am speaking and uh, then what happens like if i am standing uh, at a point a and uh, someone is uh, standing at point b and if we increase the distance between a and b then definitely b is going to have some trouble in listening and interpreting what uh, i am saying at point a basically with increase in uh, distance from the source to receiver uh, we have attenuation in nature and it happens with all type of waves whether it is longitudinal wave whether it's uh, uh, let's say transverse wave as in our case of gpr so particularly uh, a signal loss is basically a lot of type it can be frequency based it can be amplitude based so the main uh, low kind of loss here we i'm going to talk about is the amplitude loss so we send uh, uh, an, an um, a wave having a amplitude around 1 unit and then with respect to z with respect to depth the attenuation uh, occurs with uh, with some sort of factor uh, alpha called the attenuation factor and i would also like to share uh, here in this particular slide you can see the time is basically is uh, is given basically time represents the two way travel time transmitter to receiver when we receive uh, the signal and that is two way travel time and that time is given here that can also be converted into the uh, depth so basically i would like to recommend uh, like uh, whenever we see some sort of nanosecond time or something like given like uh, on the on this axis basically here the depth axis is given but sometime it can be a nanosecond in time so uh, whenever time is given consider it as depth so with different uh, 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 conductivity 1 uh, millisiemen per meter 5 millisiemen per meter 25 millisiemen per meter we are increasing the conductivity as i have told you the more the conductivity greater the attenuation and less the depth of penetration here uh, when the conductivity is very low so basically we can see gpr waves are coming and uh, for this particular target we are getting some signal here and we also getting some sort of reverberation this is a reverberation so as in this as as we increase the conductivity uh, the amplitude uh, uh, loses its uh, strength its uh, magnitude basically and we get very less uh, signature involved at a particular depth so that was the thing uh, and you uh, i would be uh, talking about this in next slides basically so depth of penetration there are two things basically that have, one has to keep in mind one is called the depth of penetration and another is called the maximum depth of penetration maximum uh, depth of setting so maximum depth of setting in this particular case is uh, around uh, 70 or 70, uh, 80 uh, nanosecond or something like that but uh, the depth of penetration basically is a point in the radar gram with respect to depth where the signal 
and the noise here yellow portion in this graph represents the noise and uh, this uh, blue portion basically represents the signal as signal attenuates we all know so this is kind of but noise is almost constant so whenever there is uh, the uh, cross section between noise and signal where noise is uh, dominating and uh, start to dominate is called the depth of penetration and uh, with respect to the central frequencies or uh, frequencies associated with the antennas of transmitter and receiver uh, uh, we have different depth of penetrations and different type of uh, application here so basically it starts from 16 uh, megahertz to 80 megahertz and then we will be getting around 35 to 50 and if we increase the number of stacks of particular uh, setting in the gpr then definitely we are going to get at around 80 meter in the rocks and with the same setting in glacier basically gpr works very good in case of ice or glaciers and that's the we were able to uh, uh, collect the data on the glaciers say on the northern poles in canada basically to uh, uh, where the depth of penetration was around uh, 100 uh, uh, plus meter that was the uh, i don't remember the exact figure but 100 plus meter was the case study that we have uh, worked for the glaciers uh, so a according to uh, their uh, central frequency as the central frequency increases depth of penetration decreases and uh, also the size of the antenna so uh, according to that we have different domains uh, different typical applications for ge uh, ge uh, for geotechnical engineering and geotechnical environment or mining or uh, geological purposes basically uh, i would recommend uh, uh, low frequency antenna say 100 megahertz uh, or less than 100 megahertz hertz then comes the resolution like uh, there is this rule, uh, thumb rule as i have already mentioned high higher the frequency we will be getting the smaller wavelength and shallower uh, the depth of penetration and more detailed uh, of the um, uh, 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 the image will be the radar gram basically that we are talking about so lower frequency larger wavelength and deeper it will go and less details so basically in this uh, particular example you can see a same uh, size of the target is given and we have acquired data for say like uh, higher frequency as you can see number of cycles are more in this case for particular uh, distance and as compared to this case particularly we are getting like say 1 2 3 3 3 3 hertz are here if we consider it for one second and we are getting only like one uh, cycle here for the uh, for one second and so we can say like this is 1 hertz and this is 3 hertz because three peaks are there and only one peak can be involved in this case so basically uh, the uh, wavelength is basically the distance between two consecutive peaks uh, for say le uh, let's say the distance between these two small the wavelength basically higher the frequency so frequency will be higher high automatically and you here in in particularly uh, mapping this particular target uh, we are we say like uh, the uh, as the uh, wavelength is small so uh, it will uh, interact the disturbance em uh, disturbance in em field basically will interact with this particular target twice but uh, here in this case it will miss so that's why uh, resolution is very crucial like uh, minimum size of the target that you are going to uh, acquire using the gpr so that is also crucial uh, so with different frequencies as i have already mentioned we have different uh, uh, imaging depth in soils depth of penetrations and accordingly approximate target Uh, size in soil so basically uh, if we are using low frequency antenna then 2 meter uh, is the recommended resolution that you will be getting and uh, as we increase the frequency like we increase the number of cycle then more smaller and smaller object will be detected let's say 0.03 meters in this case of concrete